everyone. My name is Tim. I'm the director for this production. Um, I'm also the producer for The Green Room, which is the student-run theater organization that puts on these shows. Um, if you are interested in any other shows after you watch this one, we're doing a Shakespeare parody called How Now, which is going up um, the first weekend of May. And auditions for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf are happening today and tomorrow. Um, I'm directing that show as well. Um, if you're not interested in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but you still want to get involved in Green Room, we'll be having a meeting at the end of the semester where you can help us pick shows um, or see how you can get involved next semester. Um, as far as this production goes, I am uh, extremely, extremely grateful um, to theater and dance for letting us borrow props and costumes and set. Um, I'm extremely, extremely grateful to my assistant director, Brenna Kaplan, uh, for making all the possible. <laughs> um, I, would, uh, I would hope that we don't need this information, but if we do, the fire exits are where you came in from, um, in that very back corner, uh, upstage right, and right behind the sound booth. Um, and without further ado, please enjoy the show. Prison. 
Dad, me and Alan, we go up to our room now, placing records. <laughs> Do I look like I came down from the last shower? No. Mingle. Alan, what's going on? Last week I got an invitation to an engagement party. That's a way. Pauline Clench and Roscoe Crab, which was a shock because I always thought Roscoe was ginger. He was ginger. He was as queer as whiskey and baby chat. That was the whole point, wasn't it? The marriage of convenience. But today it's a different group. Because Roscoe's dead. Pauline and the Zalan fellow wanted to get married, so I thought. Hey, so the sausage rolls, so why are we still? Exactly. Geezer from London, says it's Roscoe Cross Minder. Can't be much of a minder, Roscoe's dead. Is he your face? Does he look handy? To be honest, I think he looks a little scrawny. Check him out, Lloyd. See if he's all pulled up. Try that at work for you no more. Maybe it's a me, boys. <laughs> more guests. Roscoe Cross Minder. I thought it was a place and Roscoe Crab is mortally wounded. No, he was killed. The old villain looking for his twin sister, Rachel, and her boyfriend. Because. Revenge. Boyfriend testified against Roscoe in court. Come away for four years. It's obvious. Who is Roscoe get, looking to get in a fight with on his first day of freedom? Rachel's boyfriend. Hello, Steve. Shall I have a bit? Yeah. I do. Smashing girl is Rachel. Nothing like a vicious little toe rag of a brother. I think Roscoe was a bit. What's her name? The name was someone who likes inflicting pain. Ow! Police officer. No. <laughs> Same <laughs> That's Roscoe. Unusual to be in the staff with such different personalities. Oh, you know, there was identical twins, Roscoe and Rachel. Roscoe was a boy, Rachel's a girl. So, <laughs> identical means identical? You know what I want to know? If Roscoe's dead, what's his mind doing on my doorstep? <clears throat> Who's that? That's a queen. What a beautiful woman. Someone should write a song about her. <laughs> this is my engagement party. Your engagement party? For you. For you, Queen William, your big flage. Thank you. Don't ever wear glasses. Even if you need to, you know. <laughs> For reading. I know exactly what he's after. And if he goes on like this, He's gonna get it. <laughs> what about glasses for driving? Are you one of them uh, women's livers? Would that be a problem? A lot for women who can drive. That way I can go out, have a skin full, and get home without telling anyone. <laughs> Are you married to uh... I'm single, I'm the bookkeeper here. So you're a single, working, driving, bookkeeping woman? That's my type. Would you like to get in your office for a couple of weeks? Think about it. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead! <laughs> I like this teaser. Why well, can't tell us ask for a bank holiday? You're alright, man. You love these music. Money Wallace. Robert Johnson. Bed Belly. No. No? That's a shame. I do. What kind of music do you like? Calypso. No! Oh, dear, oh dear. I cannot stand Calypso, but it's an odd feeling, man. On your side, in the struggle. Despite your disappointing taste in music. This man is a clown! Well, everybody at the circus loves the clowns. So when you say this man is a clown, what you're really saying is, I love you. <laughs> Are you Charlie the Duck? No. No? No! Well, shit! Well, have I got the wrong answer? The invitation. I'm Charlie the Duck. Right, okay. <laughs> You don't look like a duck. <laughs> I know who you are. You're Roscoe Crow's minder. I am. I have an invitation to his engagement party. This party. Roscoe's dead. If Roscoe's dead, then who's that sitting outside in the boat with us in the shipping forecast? Oh my god, no! <laughs> He's risen from the dead, has he? Yeah. <laughs> Two days. That's one day quicker than the previous one day. <laughs> so can you come in then? Do his own engagement party. Yes. Okay, okay. Dad! Please don't let me say my turn off, Roscoe. I'll never tell him of Alan. He was perfectly happy with Roscoe six months back. He's missed the boat. Roscoe cracked these lazy lights. We already have an arrangement. An arranged marriage worthy 
of a Moliat farce, contemptible even in the 17th century. Yeah, Dad, this is the 19th century now. <laughs> yeah, then. Can you offer my daughter? I want a beautiful actor. I can't get more flaky. My love for your daughter eclipses poetry. It's ethereal, <laughs> pure, like, like the kind of water you're supposed to put in a car battery. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like that. <clears throat> Long time no see, Charlie. Uh, you're well, Roscoe. I think this considered. Uh, uh, this is Lloyd. This is a good friend of mine. And um, this is Dolly. Right. And my slitter. Everything gone. He's good. Are you the guy that got the Mau Mau off? Wasn't easy. Okay, and um, this is Pauline. Pauline? You look fantastic. <laughs> Who are you? Whole nations will be slain before you take my love from me. <laughs> Why is he talking like an actor? He wants to be an actor. Alright then. <laughs> Who are you? I am your nemesis. Francis! What's a nemesis? <laughs> then I'm oh, definitely foreign. I think it might be a Volkswagen? <laughs> Turn! <laughs> What's going on here? You thought you were dead. You thought I was dead? Why would you go ahead with my engagement party? Well, they've already paid for the footage, right? If you thought I was dead! When I got a deal with the car, I guess you were going to the soul. We didn't know you was going to go down to the road. While you was doing mortgage, you thought you needed to get someone else. Oh, I've got it over there. Okay. All right, let's do this one more time. What is your name? Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> the Greek goddess of revenge. <laughs> Charlie and Pauline and I have an arrangement. Alan. It's not love. No, you can't be love, but that's good news for you, Alan. Because the deal guarantees Pauline complete freedom in affairs of the art. As long as she is discreet. Woo! My love for Pauline is not discreet. It shouts from the rooftops. Look at me. Look at me. I am love. It shall be my son who shall marry Pauline. Come on, Alan, we're going. So leave me, Alan. Mr. Charles Clint, you will be hearing from me. I can explain. I will return like a storm and everybody will get wet. <laughs> Pauline, over here. Yay. It's 1963, Dad. You can't force me to marry a dead homosexual. Well, you're not dead, is he? He is homosexual, though. <laughs> we only have his word for that. Come back here! <coughs> hey, just give me a minute, Russell. Lloyd Bowtang. My sister used to work the bar for you at the palm tree. Rachel, yeah. How's she doing? Good. She runs this nightclub, the Saletto. Marlon. Hard, it's rough. Criminals, gangsters, Princess Margaret. Rachel met me your call. He was on the card. It won by a second round knockout. He boxed at public school, apparently. <laughs> I like your sister. She's a great girl. And she likes you. Said you could be trusted. No, the kid's upset. She thought you was dead. Want a sandwich? No. Yes! <laughs> what? Sorry, we we have to get breakfast, you see. Just... We're going to eat later. What's your understanding of the deal, Charlie? I, I settled the debt that I owed your father, paid you on the day of your engagement. 6200 today. Or me as your public wife is paid two grand a year for attending functions on your arm. And the house in Debtin. Have you got the money, Charlie? I'll write you a check. 6200 Bank is draft. And I want the 200 in cash. Got it? From the bank? Came to knock up a banker's draft for six grand. For six thousand? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> oh, Charlie. <laughs> for six thousand? <clears throat> Your boy's staying at Brighton. Can you recommend someone? I certainly can. Uh, the cricket has arms. Do they do sandwiches? Wash your mouth out. It's a pub that does. What is the landlord? He's a three-year training as a chef. Podcast. <laughs> that has got to be the most beautiful sentence in the English language. A pun! I just food! 
Francis, go ahead in the motor. What you doing, mate? You don't know where the pub is yet. Come, for a pub that tips food, there are always a star in the sky. <laughs> Charlie, I got the bank on the phone. <laughs> I don't know why they want to talk to me. <laughs> Rachel? You looking pretty good, Lloyd. Why are you in a disguise? You're really looking for me. Can I trust you? You're like a daughter to me. Uh, my brother, Roscoe, is dead. I'm sorry. No, you're not. No one is. What happened? Last Saturday, Roscoe's at Abrixton and comes looking for us. Because you testified against him. My brother, Roscoe, is dead. My boyfriend killed my twin brother, yeah. I should hate Stanley for that. But I love him. Have you ever been in love, Lloyd? True love. Yes, once. Parkhurst. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I don't know why that 200 fold then. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go to Australia. Oh my God, <laughs> Australia, that's horrible. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Australia. Oh my God, do you like opera? No, especially, but we've no choice. We sail from Southampton on Monday, the morning tide. The police will be watching the port side. Brighton's near enough, but safer. And Charlie the Duck lives here and we need money. <laughs> Where's your Stanley now? In Brighton, somewhere. I left a letter before with instructions for a rendezvous at the post office. I pray to God he's alright. <laughs> my father, Tommy Henshaw, he would have been proud of me for things I've done for my life until today. God rest his soul. I used to play washboard in a skiffle band, but they saw the Beatles last Tuesday night and sacked me Wednesday morning. It's ironic, because I start the Beatles. Saw them in Hamburg. Rubbish. I said that John Lennon, I said, John, you going now, mate? It's embarrassing. Have you been sitting writing your own songs? Sean Skinch on bass and guitar, mouth on and rack, bass drum tying me feet, and the definition of mental illness. Symbols between my knees. So there I am, middle of the chorus section. All I've been playing ten minutes. The slayer bus comes over to me and he says, Do you do your quest? I'll say yes. He says, I'd like you to play a song for my mother. Well I say, of course, where is she? He said Tasmania, so I know it didn't. <laughs> this little bug, Roscoe Crab, seen all this, offered me a week's work and bribe. Ten needs a bit of muscle. Well Tim, well, this is all fat, but I need a wage. Well, I've eaten since last night and I cannot stop. Thinking about shit. I'm well, staying in a pub, and I don't even have enough shrapnel for a point. <laughs> oh, might be just got a bag of chips in here. No, can't go through the bins. I must stop thinking about chips. I think about something boring like. Canada. <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> oh, foot and mouth. Don't be a bad egg about it. I drove a taxi, mate. I ain't heard of Oh, it's a trunk. No one's asking you to hold up the sky for all eternity. Atlas held up the sky. Heracles took over for five minutes so Atlas could go and get the golden apples from Asperity's garden. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's this pot like? Groundbreaking. Dust food. A pot of that. The dust food? Huh, buzz warm. What the fuck of that? Crap his nuts and bacon and send to the nurse. What are the rooms like? World class. Uh, not that it matters to me. I'm bored in school train. As long as I've got a bed and chair and no one pissing on my face, I'm set. Uh, you mind keeping an eye on the trunk for me? Was to see if there have any vacancies? How much? Half a crown? I reckon chips and mushy peas! <laughs> yeah, alright. Don't even 
think about it. <laughs> Started it. 
jumping on my head. <laughs> my rival's lackey. This will be the beginning of the end. Where is the dog, your governor? He will die today. Do yourself a favor, mate. Walk away. You have obviously never been in love. Well, Janice Carter, one. Pamela Costello, two. Well, a grand, three. Bring the fur out now. You want to talk to my governor? Talk a little, yes, and then slaughter a lot. All right, then. Stay there. <laughs> I'll go again. You be the post office here. Oh, it's a, uh, who's that? Oh, you're supposed to talk to my governor. I'm your governor. Oh, you, you are. I'm not cheap one. He wants to have a word with me, does he? This gentleman is called Alan. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> I'll be at the post office. <laughs> you an actor? Does it show? <laughs> Where you stand at, at an angle, as if there's an, an audience over there. <laughs> My rivalry love, Roscoe Crabbe, arrived from London today and is staying here. Oh, bizarre. Roscoe Crabbe was named a chap I killed three days ago after I accidentally stabbed him in the chest of a knife I bought three days earlier. <laughs> accidentally. <clears throat> he today has claimed my bride. My love. My life. No, that's. that's that's not true. That's, that's impossible. Roscoe Crabbe is dead. She says, I know he's dead because I, uh, you see, I, I know a fellow who has a sister who works down at the grocery store, and like she's, uh, she's shacking up with a friend of another friend of mine who work, has an MP in Parliament that secretly does cocaine down at this other nightclub. <laughs> and while he was there, he saw Roscoe Crabbe get stabbed in the chest three times by a very, very handsome gentleman. <laughs> I saw him not an hour ago. His every breath torments me. Oh, I suppose Roscoe was a quiet down when I fled the club. Oh no, if Roscoe survived and is here in Brighton, he's here for one reason, one reason only, to kill me. Oh my god. Look, he's not here. I, I know him. I, I would have seen him. Oh, I was led to believe. No matter, my card. You see Roscoe Crabbe tell him his life will only be spared if he gives up his wedding plans. You said your name was Alan. This card says Orlando Dangle. Heck, when you already had Orlando Dangle. You chose Alan. It's 1963. There's a bloody revolution in the theater, and angry young men are writing plays about Alan's. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Oh, my name? Oh, I'm gonna be creative now. Bugger out not my best game. Uh, it's, it's uh, D Dustin, uh, Dustin Pub Sign. Dustin <laughs> Pub Sign. <laughs> Pub Sign. Pub Sign. It's an old Anglo-Saxon guild name. The bakers baked the bread, the smiths were the blacksmiths, the pop signs made the... made the pop signs. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Pop Sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, country life. Roscoe, you're in Brighton. I'm better off lying low in London than lying low in Brighton. Oh, poor dear Rachel must be terrified. No, I must go to London and find Rachel. No, damn it, I can't. I have to wait here for Rachel's letter. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, Rosa. Uh, lovely day for it. Lovely day for what, sir? 
fucking crime. <laughs> Authorization letter. Right, let's put that in this pocket for now. Down pockets. Rachel Crab, right. Let's put that in this pocket. I'm quite good at this. That could work for the post office. I've been three jobs. <laughs> right. Ooh, authorization letter. Put that in the authorization's pocket in. <laughs> Who's this for? <laughs> Stanley Stubbers. Right. Oh. And out of pocket. Hmm. <laughs> Better don't need these anymore, do I? Hmm. Right. So this pocket is now for Stanley Stubbers letters. Wait, shit, what are these then? <coughs> Getting confused now. Right. What is this? Oh, Stanley Stubbers! <laughs> That's the one that tasted quite good. <laughs> Dry. Could do with a bit more ink. Right. So, authorization letters in here. Rachel's sister, Roscoe's sister's letters in here. And Joel, you been to the post office yet? Yes, God. They're all here. <laughs> Didn't know a paper to taste that good. Might go back to communion. <laughs> How many letters? Oh, this is the one, I suppose. Alright, that's shake up. Nothing easier. What are those then? These are decoy letters. Decoy letters? Yeah, the, oh, the post office will release them like, like only pigeons. They see how many find their way back and how many get shot down and run over. <laughs> <laughs> You're not telling the truth, are you, Anshul? Oh, I'm hungry, God. All my systems are shutting down. The truth, Anshul, or you'll never bugger the dolphin again. Oh, you know, Paddy's letters. Paddy? Yeah, he's an old friend of mine. Well, he's a collector letter for his boss, um, but he hadn't had any lunch yet, so I got his letters for him so he could have uh, adequate chips and mushy peas. Oh, this, this letter is from my intended, Rachel Crabb. What? You can't open other people's letters. Why not? Well, it's a very deep human thing. It's pretty basic. It doesn't need explaining. Oh, board at school, we open each other's posts all the time. We also whip each other with wet towels, and that's not normal either. <laughs> it's not. No? Huh. Well, I felt pretty good at the time. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this, uh, it's from it's from Rachel's friend, Jackie. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Rachel, the police know you've got a bright and dressed as a man, so the evening news created an artist's impression of what you might look like dressed in men's clothes. You ended up looking a bit like Ringo Starr, who's already been arrested twice. Oh, Rachel, the woman I love is in Brighton, dressed as the lead, as the lead drummer of a hot beat combo. Oh, they also carried a boxing photo of Stanley. Oh, God, that's, that's me. And so awful, you have to go to Australia. No, Jackie, three kisses. Huh. Three kisses. That's a bit girls only Greek island. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Angel, mm? you met Patty's boss yet? No. No. All right, well, I want you to find Patty and tell him, tell his employer that I'm staying here. Right, I'll look for Patty after them. No, now. Nah. It's a matter of life and death. Has anybody got a sandwich? What? Come on, there's like 30 people. Check under your seats. Come on, yeah. Look, come on. The sound? Oh, has he got one? <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. You are the kindest soul on this planet. <laughs> Do you know this is edible? I really hope it is, because I'm back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad no one's interrupting me, eating it. Last minute. You want to handle that funky yours? Yeah. Now. Small, very distressed frog trapped inside. 
How did you know there was a small, very distressed frog trapped inside a sealed envelope? Shit! <laughs> oh, you see, God, there was no frog, actually. I just... I let it for me that I hadn't yet opened it. I opened yours by mistake. Get my trunk and then come back here. We need to talk. It's from a friend of mine, Jackie. Stanley thinks she's a lesbian, but the only evidence for that is that she doesn't fancy Stanley. <laughs> it's a condition of the spine called ankylosing spondylitis. If I lift anything heavier than a knife and fork, I've got nine. Are you stupid? No. I could have gone to university if I'd got the qualifications. <laughs> What's your ironing like? World class. Got the equivalent of a beer and ironing from Hampshire. My shirt's in the trunk. Here's the key. Has Charlie the Duck been here? Has he given you the banker's draft? No. Has he given you the 200 cash? He's not come here. He's not given me no money. All my mother's life. God rest his soul. Typical bloody <laughs> Charlie Duck's ass type. Better go chase him up. Well. He didn't say his shirts needed ironing urgently. Better go up to I Street, make for some food. What's he got, man? Got his bangers here. And sausages? Bangers and mash? Oh! Sausage and mash in an envelope! What would have seen the future? <laughs> Cockney by me. Bangers and mash? Cash! Oh! It's not food then! The 200 fold and big on her. Don't let me down. When am I going to eat? <laughs> hey, Joel, you met with Patty yet? Oh, uh, I've arranged to meet with him later on. On the pier. What's that? So I'm going to put the money for my governor. Uh, I'm your governor. Oh, you are, aren't you? <laughs> Alright, go on then, take it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> must have for that pawnbroker down the road. Did he have a, a glass eye, a ear, and a wig? For sale? No, it's functioning parts of his anatomy. <laughs> what? He had on an ad. Huh. No, I left the pocket watch of them earlier. Now, I like Brighton. Pubs with food, cash delivered. It's a better kind of England. Oh, oh, I'm going to go in now and get on to your ironing. Oh, initiative. I like it. But we'd already agreed at iron shirts. No, but give it a go anyway. Never understood how irons worked. I bumped off physics with all my lessons in the radiation cover trying to make my penis glow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, touch me and I'll scream. I am a secret. I don't want to know anything about your 
blood. I wish you were dead. I can't bear to see her suffer any longer. I am dead! <laughs> Are you? No. <laughs> really? What's it like? <laughs> My brother Roscoe Crabbe is dead. You're Roscoe's brother? Sister. I don't understand. I'm Rachel, Roscoe's twin sister. Oh yeah, they said it was one of two identical twins. <laughs> you can't have identical twins of different sexes. Why not? Because one would be male and the other would be female. I don't understand. <laughs> All you need to know is that I am a woman. So hang on. That means I can't marry you, don't it? <laughs> More importantly, it means you can marry Alan. Can I? In the near future. No, I better go tell him! No! I then it must remain a secret. I need your help. I'll do anything to marry Alan. I love him. I too am in love. Really? With Alan? No! That was weird, isn't it? It's like being mad. Insane. Look at me, dressed in my dead brother's clothes. Maybe it's your way of living for him. Well, yes, I, I hadn't thought of that. We girls have to help each other. Sorry. Should have knocked. Come <laughs> back in half an hour. Put a record on. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go ahead with plans for our wedding, right? But I need time to choose a dress. And the banker's draft. The so money so. is not a problem, Moscow. I better put everyone to look at it off. Harry Dangle won't like this. Oh, believe it or What if Dad tells Alan? Alan might think we've had it off. What would Alan do if he were to think that? Oh, well, he'd go into one. He's known as a dangerous actor. I can handle myself. I know, but still, I bet I'm time. <laughs> Wait! You swore to keep my secret! I'm not about to go along with his lies. Stanley and I are going to have to go to Australia. <laughs> Slightly nibbled. And show <laughs> Oh, what a mousetrap go off on your tongue. The personal thing go. Oh. <laughs> uh, understand. <laughs> I do enjoy pain. <laughs> uh, you found Patty yet? Well, I was gonna look for Patty after lunch. Oh, I don't have time for lunch. You know, I'm gonna go down to the PM lunch for myself. Now that suits me. Get this gun out of the way while I serve the other one. Oh, by the way, what does Patty look like? Well, he's a big lad. Smells of horses. Smells of horses or smells like a horse? The former implies, you know, good family, good money. The second implies poor hygiene. Well, at the end of the day, it's the same thing, isn't it? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> now take your time. God, there's two peers. Enjoy this sunshine. I, I can't remember what peer is said now. Oh, do you want me to order food for you for later? Oh, I'm not hungry. You can order what you like. The important thing is that you wait on in private by you and by you alone. Let's see, what's this room like? Ah, perfect. 
I'll eat in here. I don't want to walk around all this cash on me. Can I trust you with it, Edgel? Was it edible? Damn it. I'll sit with me, Edgel. I'll sit at the back. <clears throat> uh, uh, my name is Gareth. I am the head waiter. Uh, this is Alfie. I'm at six. Oh, no, you're not. You're 87. But I thought I was 86. No, 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 that was last year. Uh, be patient with Alfie, please. He, uh, he's a bit deaf, so don't turn your back on him. He's gonna lip read. Well, well, I ain't never going back there. What was the bloody massacre? He was, uh, he was at the lip <laughs> He was at the lip uh, He has, uh, balance problems. Yes, he suffers from you know, the tremors, and he has one of those newfangled pacemakers on his chest. Is that all I need to know? No, there's one more thing. Oh, what's that? <laughs> it's his first day. <laughs> uh, uh, I've been I've been told to set up places for Mr. Clench and your other boss. Oh, in there, the Compton room, and my other governor is going to eat alone later in the Bradman room, and they both asked me to be waiting on by me and me alone. But <laughs> you have two employers. I'm well, not good. I was trained by the legendary French waiter. Jean, Jacques, Jim? <laughs> oh, in France? Of course! Well, which town? Ashby de la Zich. <laughs> well, that's the Lowborough! It is now! <laughs> These governors of yours, you've got two jobs. <laughs> what? No, that is our secret for today. Well, what's in it for me and Alfie? What, it's less work for you and you still get paid. Well, what about our tips? Oh, you'll get a big tip from me at the end of the afternoon. All right. Well, I was going to start by setting up two places in the Compton room. You can do that. Then I'll eat it. All right, Alfie, okay. set up one place in the Bradman room, all right? I'm going to get some wine lists. <laughs> Choices, you think Roscoe and Crowley Seven. Seven. A la carte. No. They're gonna eat indoors. <laughs> oh, oh the, the many please, I'll, I'll order it for them. They use in French. How many languages do you speak? I speak two languages actually. English and French. The menu, pour favor. Pour favor is Spanish. Oh, Guess I'll just speak three languages. <laughs> Alfie! Where's Alfie? Oh, he's in, he's in the background. Alright, I'll get him a menu. Alfie? Yeah. Put the menu and the wine list on the table. <laughs> oh, no! Alright, ready to order then. Yeah, can I get... Can I get... Can you just bring me a lot of hot food and, you know, just keep it coming? My pleasure. <laughs> oh, uh, Gareth, Alfie, uh, can you bring the food out to this table? Just leave it there and I'll conserve it. Alfie, bring the soup up and bring it here. Yo, yo. 
Go back early. Yeah, what down to the first pier, I couldn't find anyone that smelled like a horse. And the second pier was, um, on fire. So uh, let's give it a miss. <laughs> the truth is, probably just swarming with rosas. I'll leave now? Now? Yes, now. What you got there? Your soup cup. But I wasn't even here yet. Well, that's how good I am. Oh, oh, come, you're actually here now, the, the uh, tennis company. Oh, what's that? Uh, I spent a little bit of trouble in there. <laughs> Mills and Boone. Oh, bring that soup in, would you? I'm starving to keep my own pants. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, goodness. What am I going to do? We're a place missing. What's that? Oh, uh, your, your soup, girl? Yes, it is. What's the matter with you? Well, I haven't eaten in 16 hours. Get me a bowl. I need everything twice. Oh, get me more soup, quick! Here's your cold mates. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and beef and what do they call that little slice sausage there? Pepperoni. <laughs> you sound out of breath, Alfie. Those oh, so, so fucking stairs they take down here. I'll turn my pacemaker up a couple notches. <laughs> Hey, Joel, uh, where's that soup you had? Uh, oh, it was cold, God. Uh, send it back. Did you swap? No. Back downstairs. Give me a wine menu, would you? Uh, I wish I could like to drown in a bottle of Grand Cru. I mean, I, I can't find Rachel. My life might be over. I may never make love to her ever again. <laughs> Rule one for being a waiter. Don't eat the food. Superior of the boss. Smashing. Oh, and, and you want to warn this? Uh, also, not the king of the. Actually, no, I please. Uh, have you cleared that room? All right, all right. Also, not the canal de volaire. Oh, wonderful! My man used to the canal de volaire every bonfire night. Chicken balls. What? I didn't think chickens had. I mean, cockerels, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Never understood soup. Don't need a knife and fork to eat it, so it's not food. So it must be drinking, in which case, rather have a point. <laughs> Francis, can we clear our table with soup, please, and we'd like to order some wine. Drink, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> in this and a Dutch brothel. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, wine aroma. <laughs> oh, yes, there's lots of soup in here. Oh, right. Want someone to look after the soup touring for me? Uh, you don't. No. <laughs> oh, you. You don't mind, do you? What's your name? Lily. Lil Lily Lily Moment. And do you know your national insurance number? Lily Lily Moment. I'm sorry. Lily Moment. There we go. Relax, Lily Moment. I just want you to hide this seat turn for me. Can you just hide it under your seat, maybe? Yeah, that's. Keep it. Can you hide it a little under more? I just. I'm... That's perfect. That's perfect. Round of applause for Lily Moment, everyone. Right, how many do we have here? Twelve. Right, fetch me three plates. Alright, so that's three diners. So that's four for each and none for me. Four, three each, and three for me. Oi! Why is eating the fucking chicken balls? <laughs> or, two each. And shit for me. Oh, them's not for you guys. <laughs> but what are they like? They're beautiful. <laughs> All one each and nine for me. What? 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 I'm gonna put them. Okay. I'm gonna 
going to convince the children of what you're selling and what you the website doesn't come out that door. Door. Right. That's door. Hold on. 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 Hold uh, here's your yeah. vegetables. Sat <laughs> you can pop them there. Sat you can pop them there! Certainly! Certainly! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> About time. Are you the wine waiter? I can be. We'd like to order a bottle of the 58 Clarets, please. All right, so that'll be one bottle of the Chat Neuf de Pop and one bottle of the Clore. Now it's just one bottle of Claret, all right? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, my mistake. Come here. Come here. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky. I nearly had to kill you then. Yeah, I understand how hard it is.
dead. What are you helping then? Oh, Henschel, uh, uh, oh, good God! Oh, could have busted in the bar with a lead pipe. Oh, oh, and that's my wife! Oh, oh that's grand fruit. Spill that. Oh, what a waste. This one dead? Oh, uh, well, it's got pacemaker, I think. Oh, can I just turn it up a couple more, just see what happens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on? Bus 
station. And if you talk to buses, as I do, they will tell you their destiny is rich deep in their bussy souls. It is inescapable. It's, it's the timetable. Buses laugh at love. Ha! Love is fluff. Very fluffy fluff. Destiny? Destiny is steel. Orlando, what are you doing here? I said I'd return and take my revenge, et voila. Where did you get that knife? Walmart. <laughs> hey, boy. We, the educated classes, have our own weapons. The law. Contract, and my particular specialism, sesquipedalia verbis. Words? Not just words, words put the hand on. If sesquipedalia verbis fails, if Charlie refuses to allow me to marry Pauline, tell him he will have this to deal with.
You bewitched him, like you bewitched me with your little prick teases. You play a man like a penny whistle. I loathe you. I'm gonna go do myself in then. No! He's not worth the love. He stand there and watch you do it and not raise a finger. Look at him. You're not the great romantic lover, are you? You're a man what? What? Let me give you some advice. Men, they'll do anything to get you into bed. Lie? Cheat? Buy you a bed! <laughs> <laughs> and the tragedy is, once they've had you, they'll never want you quite as much ever again. Don't take nuts, girls. Here's a hand out at the end. <laughs> oh. I can't believe you would have let them kill yourself. You're heartless. I'm gonna die anyway, because I can't live with this pain. When I'm dead, I want you to know it'll be you what killed me. Oh. Nice. <laughs> 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 Frailty, thy name is woman! You better watch your tongue, young man, sliding off woman off. It's 1963. There's a revolution coming. I predict in 20 years' time there'll be a woman at 10 down in street. Yeah, and she won't be doing any of the washing up. Then you'll see exactly what women can do. There will be a more just and fair society. The feminine voice of compassion for the poor will be the new guiding principle of government. And there will be an end to foreign wars. <laughs> Now, after a lovely big meal, there's just a couple of things I can't resist doing. And one is having a little smoke. Oh, beautiful. Now, those of you out there who understand your Commedia dell'arte, your omnis eaters, your guardian readers, <coughs> might now be asking yourselves if the Harley Quinn, that's me, has now eaten, what will be his motivation in the, in the second half? Has anyone here said that? Perhaps in an attempt to impress a date? No! Good. It's not nice now we don't have any dicks in the night. <clears throat> so my character, the Harley Quinn, now that he's eaten, has to find some other base motivation to drive his actions in the second act. And your job is to try and figure out what that might be. Harley has written one letter to Alec. <laughs> one to Roscoe. Are we going then? Mallorca? Oh, it's him. I like him. I have a letter from your governor. Can I trust you with it? Confidential is my middle name. What are your other names? Francis. Enschel. So your full name is Francis Confidential Enschel? <laughs> At your service, gorgeous. Calling a woman gorgeous is patronizing and chauvinist, obviously. But since I fancy him rotten, and I haven't had that proper serving up in a while, I forgive him. <laughs> You've got honest eyes. Thank you, baby. No trouble, big boy. <laughs> a friend of mine likes you. What's his name? Paddy. What's he look like? Well, could be a film star. Godzilla. He's a good looking man. He's just big boned. And how did he get big boned? <laughs> <laughs> the usual nature, nurture. Partly genetic, partly pies? Oh, he likes his food, yeah. <coughs> Is eating or making love? Well, well, that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, would you like to meet him? I wouldn't want to interrupt him if he's eating. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Stay here. I'll, I'll go and get him. Oh, uh, don't put your glasses on. I've, I've done a lot worse. We've all done a lot worse, haven't we, girls? We've all woken up the morning after the night before, taken one look at the sorry state of the bloke like next to us, left out of bed, sat down, and written to our MPs demanding that tequila should be a controlled drug! <laughs> Just me, man. <laughs> there, there, there. My name is Patrick, but my friends call me Patty, and I'm in love with you, I am so. Really? Oh yes, well, I'm an hopeless case. Or well, I'm like a cork tossed on an ocean of desire. Is that difficult? It's exhausting. There's only so much tossing a man can endure. Oh, I'll grow this rose for you now, I did, so I. That's very sweet of you. Any chance of a kiss? Oh, oh. Wait, 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 you better go now. I, wait, I left me also on a double yellow. 
He's like a big kid. <laughs> I've always liked that in men. Immaturity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, do you, what do you reckon to Patty? Uh, do you like him? Why can't you, Francis? Ask Francis. Ask me on a date. Well, I've asked you to go to Mallorca. I can't just go to Mallorca with you. We have to go on a date first. All right. Uh, What's a good first date from a girl's point of view? She's got to feel relaxed, secure, no under pressure. Uh, Dolly, how about you and I next Saturday? Saturday afternoon, not evening. No pressure. How about you and I? Would you like to go on? Would you like to go on a rabbit shoot? <laughs> I think you should take me to the movies, and we can have dinner afterwards. We can give the relationship a go, see if it's got legs. And if it has it got things, and neither of us can stand up, then we'll have to find something we can both do lying down. You've got this all figured out, haven't you, Francis? Of course. I'm a man. We plan. We don't just go walking into things, like, if it feels right, but like you women do. Well, everything needs planning. A relationship is no different from, I don't know, oh, building a new petrol station. Can't sink the, can't build a shop before you sink the reservoirs. Surely you can build a shop before you sink the reservoirs if you don't build a shop directly on top of the reservoirs. <sighs> Look, you're not going to win this argument as I actually built a petrol station, and it was crucial that we sunk the reservoirs before we built the shop, or we would have had to a build the shop, b knock it down, c sink the reservoirs, d build the shop. Which, you know, might well be how a woman would build a petrol station. And there's nothing wrong with that approach, apart from the fact that it's brainless. I'll tell you exactly how a woman will build a petrol station. She'll make sure there was enough land to factor in a pleasant walk from the shop to the pump. Maybe lay out a lawn that A lawn? With flowers and a rock green and something for the kids to play. For the kids? And a separate toilet block for the woman that has three times as many stalls as the men's. Woo. Hmm. Woo. What do you need all that for? It's a petrol station. Yes, but it could be a nice petrol station. Nobody in their right mind wants a petrol station to be nice. It's a bloody petrol station. It's not going to work, is it? Men and women. Me and you. No. Well, that's a shame, because well, I really fancy you. Thank you. I've always wanted to be a sex object. Well, it's better than not being a sex object, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be going to Mallorca. You can't deliver Mallorca, Francis. You're a loser. Oh. Oh, Who's this letter for again? Your governor. Don't open it. What to find out is it for? Just give it to your boss. Well, it's not as easy as that. I don't see what the problem There's is. There's no name on the envelope. What do you need a name for? Well, because, because, what can I tell you? It's very complicated, and really, really, you don't want to know. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> no idea. Bros, he stole this. What was that? It's a letter for you. Oh. Why did you just say it's for Rosco? <laughs> because I'm a woman, and I'm really stupid, and I can't be trusted to do anything properly. <laughs> <laughs> Men, this letter has been opened. Francis! Oh, I'm Francis? Uh, yes? This is the second private letter you've opened today. I have no choice. You're sat No! I opened the letter. Come again? Yeah, you did it. I was worried sick of my Pauline, so I opened the letter and I read it. I don't believe you. Test me on the contents. No, bloody hell. You can't honestly believe her. She'll be trying to get well in with him. I know you. Around men. What? And I don't know you, Charlie Clutch? I know how the business works. I know where the money is. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> oh, very knowledgeable. <laughs> I'm going home. Nice seeing you, Francis. I love your friend, Patty. He's not an idiot. I promise! I can change! <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to my mate Dino. Uh, give me ten minutes. Call up these amusements on the front. He owes me one.
Where are you going? Me? Come here. Oh, who's that eating my man? Me. <laughs> Cos, what are you that for? What's my name? Roscoe Crab. And what have you heard about the crabs? No, don't worry. Not going there. <laughs> you don't mess with them. I'll be at Carlotti's amusement arcade on the front. You know me. What are you going to do? Oh. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, I already gonna, well, I'm gonna go and look for Paddy on the pier, like you said. Who's Paddy? Shit. Paddy is an old friend of mine who works as a sort of butler at a settlement in Brighton, and he, he told me he could uh, teach me how to iron shirt properly so that nobody gets badly injured. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> oh, my nerves. Well, Henshaw, what's, what's going on? I swear I just saw a chef run up and slap you across the face. Yeah, what? One of the locals. <laughs> What'd you do? I kissed his girlfriend. This is out of the blue, you walked up and kissed a chap's girl. Yup. <laughs> That's a bit shit. I'm sorry, I'm with him. Come here. Oh no, please go. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one hour to finish that iron that you never started, and then I want you to go down to the pier oh. and find Paddy. Oh, so that's the downside of two jobs. We'll double the politics. <laughs> Mr. Summers is in room ten. Is in room number ten, having another lie down. Roscoe's chasing Charlie for the money, and the plan is to do both sets of irony and then go in love for Paddy on the pier. And yes, I know, Paddy doesn't exist, but that is the kind of insanity that makes perfect sense when you've got two jobs. <laughs> <sighs> Bloody hell! What's this? What's a framed photograph of Mr. Stubbers? What's my number one gov, Roscoe, doing with a framed photograph of my number two gov, Mr. Stubbers? And <laughs> Joel! Is shit ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> what are you golfing at? Not to me, never seen a man that shit naked from the waist up before, have you? I'll not tell you why those chaps didn't shower. Yeah, that's how we won two world wars, you know. Germans had superior technology, our officers shower together. This is the business central. <laughs> Almost. What's this? Oh, oh. That's. that's mine, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is a frank photograph of me on graduation day, the very same one I gave to Rachel. Is that? Well, yes, that third class honors degree in zoology has got my name on it. <laughs> You developed a thing for me. Uh, no, it's, it's a nice frame, God. Where'd you get it? Oh, gotta be very careful, I see. <laughs> I bought it off my friend Paddy, who, uh, who received it in news payment from his previous employer before he died. <laughs> before he did. Before he did what? Before he did. Die. <laughs> he didn't die, did he? He did. Or did he die? Well, he, he was diagnosed with diarrhea, but died of diabetes. He died of diabetes, did he? <laughs> he did, didn't he? Were you there? When? When he was diagnosed with diarrhea, but died of diabetes. No, I was in Dickot, and he was diagnosed with diarrhea, but died of diabetes and died. Oh, when did he die? Uh, diarrhea or diabetes? He didn't die of diarrhea, he died of diabetes. He, he did? Well, where? In Dagenham, <laughs> that's what you said. Uh, Paddy told me it was a couple of days ago. Rachel. Rachel is dead, but she's but she's all I live for. Oh god, oh my grief, grief. Oh look at me, I'm shaking, man, I'm shaking. Oh my girl, my love, my life is dead. <gasps> breathe, man! Breathe! Oh, she's, she's everything. Oh, there is nothing without her. <laughs> I think that went quite well. <laughs> I like you, Andrew Posh. Just my luck. Here comes my other Governor Roscoe, Mr. The Duck. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in Dino. It's not like him to let me down. I'm so glad he didn't take his check. What's a check? Check is a promise. And, and a promise in this modern world is about as useful as a pair of nuns' tits. <coughs> Turn, please. <coughs> I'm sorry, did I offend you? I thought we were all men here. Uh, your failure to deliver means that I will have to change my plan. 
Oh, oh the minute and stuck on a long gone begonia. That's what I like about us. I say there's cats on my curtains, you say there's dogs on my wall! Well, Rachel, Rachel, uh, your twin brother Roscoe is in Brighton looking to kill me! Roscoe is dead, he died instantly! But I heard you were staying at the cricketer's arms. That was me, disguised as my brother. Are you staying at the cricketer's arms? Yes. Oh, so am I, lucky dip. Have you got a double? Actually, uh, Stanley, I'm afraid, um, I've been thinking. And I'm really sorry, but I don't want to go to Australia. Oh. Oh, well, thank Christ I never did. I can't stand bloody opera. Well, what are we going to do? Could you marry a murderer? I guess I'm already in love with a murderer. Who? You! Oh, oh God, don't do that. I will marry you if we can find a way of saying it. Dirty wicked and Margaret, whereas well, my intentions are pure. I love her. When did this happen? About half past ten this morning. <laughs> I've asked her to go to Mallorca with me, but I can't afford to go. I need fifty quid and next week off. It'd certainly be revenge on Paddy, much more satisfying than punch in the face. He nearly caused two suicides. And you'd be saving Dolly from two days face down and cuffed to a Margate four poster. Oh, here's 50. Mm. You know, it occurs to me that Paddy is the cause of all our problems. Mm. Uh, we've got a plan. Oh, all right. <laughs> Let me. Yeah. Right. There's this really sweet, shy, innocent girl I know called Dolly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she a virgin? Definitely. Right. <laughs> I went out with a virgin once, and up along, obviously. That, that'd be stupid. <laughs> right, Paddy is trying to trick her into going for a dirty weekend in Margate. Oh, what a country life. But, well, she's always had this dream of going to Mallorca, but she can't afford to go. If you could pay for a ticket to Spain, then she'll be safe from Paddy's evil scheme, and Paddy is suitably punished. Oh, brilliant. Ears 50, and she'll run down to the travel agent and get that poor girl a ticket. Thank you, but well, do you think we should let her go alone? Hmm. No, no, not to Spain. Not with them, man. I wouldn't leave a Spaniard alone with a Swiss roll. <laughs> When's the dirty weekend? Week after next. Here's another 50, and sure, you're just gonna have to go with her. And if uh, anything happens between the two of you, at least the cherry was picked by an Englishman. Oh, yes! I don't need 50 quid! That's two flights and 50 spenders! I'm a genius! <laughs> oh, Rosas! Yeah, I'll see me and Charlie! Please forgive the lad, he made a mistake. You 
You've been really, really horrible to me recently, Alan. Okay, that is tender, I said. I'm upset. Look at him. Oh, I saw that. Pauline, <laughs> I would cut myself and offer you my blood. But first, observe my tears. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe Crab. I shall plead self-defense. What you need is a good solicitor. This is Harry Dangle. He's good. He got the Mau Mau off. But but in Kenny, the Mau Mau went on a murderous rampage, lot and hundreds of innocent men, women, and children. Allegedly. Oh. <laughs> My pardon. I understand the only witness to the killing of Roscoe Crab is Rachel, who's also your intended. Oh, certainly. Well, in this country, a wife cannot testify against her husband in a criminal trial. What does that mean? There are no witnesses to the crime. But I did actually kill him. No, you plead <laughs> not guilty. <gasps> but, but that would be lying. <laughs> lying ain't difficult. Here, yeah, give it a go. Did you kill Roscoe Craig? No. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, <laughs> weddings and a court case with fees. What a wonderful day. <laughs> It's all very well, so I'll have your happy ending and all, Dad, but you ain't done nothing for Dolly. What's Dolly got to do with anything? 
Well, Ross and his minder has asked to go on a holiday in Mallorca, and if you give her the time off, that's like three and a half the Indians in there. Uh, uh, don't, wait, don't. Don't go accepting the, the first offer that comes along. Uh, there's another man waiting for you who's also in love with you, and he's offering a different kind of holiday. Spend your whole life waiting for one man, then two come along at once. Like buses. <laughs> Well, the first is your standard British dirty weekend in Margate. That's 48 hours, nothing but a sex pest for company. Sounds good, yeah. And a romantic week abroad, Mallorca. Sun, sand, sea. And diamond. <laughs> That's a clear choice. Now what about the men? Well, Paddy is offering Margate. Whereas with this man, next week you'll be in sunny Spain. I thought you said it was the week after next. Oh. Let me try to explain. I've given him next week off and 50 quid. Well, I've given Enshul the week after next off and I've given him 100 pounds. Two weeks in my yoga! What's going on? But it's not Paddy's fault. Where's Paddy? I think he's outside. Go and get him. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 